Hello everyone, in this video I will be reviewing the Kinera Celeste Wyvern King, or QING. It's a $30 single dynamic driver IEM that was sent to me by HiFego for review. So yeah, let us get into it. To get things started, I want to take a look at the amplitude response graph so we can see the right channel in blue, the left channel in green. There's a bit of imbalance, so I'll talk about this later, but in my EQ I did reduce the gain of the right channel by a dB to compensate for this because out of the box there is a noticeable right bias and obviously this is not something which is going to 100% apply to other units. Maybe the channel matching could be better, but I really don't think this level of channel matching is acceptable because, you know, if there's a 1 dB balance in a specific part of the region, that's not as bad as the entire region being um, different in some sense, but you could also argue that if you're doing EQ and have the equipment to measure your earphones, this is actually easier to correct because you just need to reduce one channel by a single decibel value for all frequencies. And the stock tips that came with this earphone are really like weird and I don't know, I personally was not able to get a good fit with them. So I'm just using these like random silicone tips I found. I don't think the tips really matter that much to be honest, but yeah. Anyway, comparing the Wyvern to my preferred target, I guess, in some sense, or just a smooth version of my variations EQ to my flat on-axis speaker system, we can see that it's a bit shouty and has basically no upper treble extension, and this is how it sounds. It's shouty and doesn't really have any upper treble extension. Yeah, the default sound is really bad, just listen to it now. It's really shouty and there's not really any separation at all, so it does not sound like what you'd expect the singer to sound like in real life tonally. And yeah, for that reason, I mean, out of the box, just like don't even consider this because it's not worth listening to. But then again, I think the question is how much does it improve with EQ? And let's look into that. So in the graph I showed earlier too, you saw my EQ as well, um, fixing the shout area, bringing up the treble bit in areas where it's lacking and I also reduced the gain of the right channel, which you can see in my Qtilix EQ preset right here. But yeah, um, now let's get into the sound with equalization. Are there any noticeable flaws left? The main issue I would say is that there's some like slight wispiness left in the treble or a lack of smoothness in general. And the treble quality is not as good as the variations and the variations doesn't need any modifications to the treble with EQ to sound good, but I would say it's probably near impossible to make the treble on this sound as good as variations, but even with that said, with some level adjustments, you're able to get it such that, you know, the peaks and dips are in positions where they're not super apparent, but also not completely ruining the response either. And an important thing to remember is the goal of these earphones is to not be heard at all. We want to hear the music, not the earphones, and in that sense, you can hear colorations from these earphones, even with EQ, it's not really at the level of a flagship speaker system or IEM's EQ to that flagship speaker system. But then again, with my EQ to the variations, I didn't have to do anything in the upper treble, but this, you know, there are clearly issues in the upper treble by default, which you have to address. And the fact that there's so much channel imbalance by default is a little bit concerning because if another consumer gets this IEM and they don't have the measurement equipment, which costs several times this IEM, then what are they going to do? They're just going to have to deal with the terrible sound. But when you get a $30 IEM, what do you really expect anyway? So I'll listen to Blah 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 by Itzy right now from the Ringo album. So the treble is obviously still harsh with this EQ, and there is a bit of veil noticeable in the treble as well. and. You could argue that this is potentially fixable with EQ, but I really don't think it's going to be possible to make it as good as the variations, especially across different listeners. I mean, the timbre immediately when listening to the same song and variations is more natural. There's more complete information in the vocals. You don't feel like there are random areas kind of like below where they should be. And I think what this results in is when you finally achieve the correct tonality with IEMs, you do get this like holographic imaging in a sense that you don't really care that much that you're wearing IEMs. For one last song, we'll listen to Last Drop by Red Velvet. We'll start with the variations for reference and then we'll compare it to the Wyvern Quing. Sounded pretty good on the variations. Let's listen on the Quing or King. 
Immediately the vocals sound veiled clearly. And then you can still hear the treble harshness too later in this song. So, I mean, there's not really much more to add to this review. I would say that the midrange is about equal to the variations after EQ and the bass, I still think the variation sounds better even with the good seal here. I don't think this is placebo. Maybe it's some different interaction with the ear caused by the dynamic driver and balanced armature crossover network, but yeah, I mean, this is just another $20 IM that sounds terrible out of the box and is not worth recommending for that reason, I guess. But then there's also channel imbalance that I had to correct with EQ and you need measurement equipment for this. So all around, I would say this is a pretty terrible product re regardless. Um, but at the same time, what do you really expect for $30? I don't know, but you know, I don't really have time for this IM, I would say. So yeah, that's my review on the Canaris Celeste Wyburn King.